Hello, I'd like to comment about Chapter 15, Individual Behaviors. There were quite a few interesting comments made, and you may recall I was asking you to elaborate on what you didn't know before you read the chapter. I based that kind of question on the quote I like, you don't know what you don't know. I don't know what I don't know until we're exposed to another point of view. We're exposed to another point of view through conversations with others, reading, etc. First, I'd like to comment on constructive stress. When I was in Shell Oil, I would take a big rubber band, and I'm sorry I can't find one here in my home office, but we would take a big rubber band and we'd stretch it, stretch it. And we call that creative tension, creative tension, the same as constructive stress. I always like to think of it as setting a goal slightly above your current level so that when you reach that goal, you will have learned something. I think higher education, if it's done right, has a lot of creative tension. Secondly, impression management. Several of you said you weren't aware of that, and that's the systematic attempt to influence on how others perceive you. I would tie that to brand management, managing your own personal brand, as I've said before, defined as what people say when you leave the room. Do they say, ah, comes late to work all the time? That's part of the impression you will leave. Ah, oh, accepts the work that he doesn't have to do, or she doesn't have to do. That's exceeding expectations. That's brand and impression management. Now, a number of you mentioned organizational citizenship. Let me quote one of our colleagues. This concept is interesting to me because although I feel I practice it, I don't feel that I do it because I want to help the organization or because I'm so satisfied with my job that I want to advance to advance in the company or advance the company. To me, the examples that are provided, such as going to the going for the extra mile or taking on additional work, are just part of being a good employee. And I do them because I want to keep my job. Well, exceeding expectations does get management's attention. And those that constantly exceed expectations uh, are noticed. And you exceed expectations because you volunteer to do it, because you have an interest in it. Let me correlate that with face-to-face -face students who will say, do I get extra credit for doing that? And I always think, you don't get extra credit. It, you, you, you can't just do something for extra credit. Because when you get out in the real world, nobody's going to offer you extra credit. You'll get smart. You'll do it. You'll exceed expectations. I'd like to make a point on group decision making. Yes, it's very nice to have group decision making to involve all of the stakeholders. But there's one aspect that is a drawback. It can take so long to make a group decision, that by the time the decision is made, the competition has made one and moved on, and you're just still behind. So it has to be a balance. Ah, selective perception. I mentioned it before. We all have different lenses when we wear glasses. Selective perception is wearing those glasses and deciding what you will actually see and listen to. You know, it's the same old story of people seeing, five people saying, seeing the same accident and having five different points of view. Now that selective perception is driven by our values and what's below the iceberg. 
that we can't see our educational history, our religion, our philosophy, our families, our DNA. That's why in decision making, a key question to ask is, what data are you looking at? What information are you using in making that decision? Gender and leadership. Yes, I agree with those that agree that there is a difference in gender and how genders lead based on male, female, different ways of behavior. And finally, someone mentioned a psychological contract. Quote, the psychological contract boils down to one's thoughts of, am I being fairly paid for the job I'm performing? I've seen people say, I don't get paid enough to do that. So they don't do that. I've had some face-to-face -face students say, if they paid me more, I would probably do that job. And I advise, don't use that as an example in a job interview. Well, you had a lot of very interesting ideas, and I hope my comments have provoked some more thoughts in this course. Thank you.